Hi again, Greg Bell, the News Tribune here at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. What a night here for football. They're still yelling on the streets of Soto and it's almost midnight and I could go on and on till the break of dawn about this one. I've been fortunate to do this for about 20 years, not 20 years exactly now. I've seen some incredible games and tonight was one of them. After the game, what told me that I was not too far off on that, Russell Wilson after the game was absolutely spent. He was hoarse. You could barely hear him speak. He was raspy in his voice. He looked just beaten down, tired, and exhausted emotionally. He said a lot of that had to do with Paul Allen. Of course, the Seahawks honored him before the game. The late owner inducted the 12th inductee to their ring of honor tonight, a very fitting induction of the 12th inductee as the 12th man for what he did to save the Seahawks in Seattle. After the game, Russell Wilson presented the game ball to Bert Colt, Seahawks vice chair, a great friend of the late Paul Allen, who died in October. And he told his teammates as he was doing it, Wilson did, he said, Paul Allen, for those of the new players who don't know him, always said, believe big. And that's what the Seahawks did tonight, in Wilson's mind, believe big. Wilson said he thought from way above that Paul Allen may have had a few breaths to blow Greg Zerline's final 44-yard field goal wide to the right. I mean, that in itself was improbable. Zerline is one of the best kickers in the world. And it seemed at 44 yards after the Rams had driven from their own seven to the Seahawks 27 in a frantic final rush with no timeouts in the last 90 seconds that they would win. And the kick goes wide. And Tyler Lockett said it reminded him of that frigid day in January 2016 in Minneapolis, 25 below zero when Blair Walsh had probably missed a chip shot field goal in a playoff game that allowed the Seahawks to survive and advance there. And it felt a little bit like that too. KJ Wright, longest tenured Seahawk, 30 years old, a husband, a father, has won a Super Bowl, played in two, said tonight was one of the best games he's ever played in, and it was the first time he has ever cried on the field after a game, including after winning the Super Bowl. He said the emotion of the night, the ebbs and the flows, and the pluses and the minuses, and to win the game in that fashion at the end against this Rams team that they've lost so many times to recently, Wright said he was quite emotional. So that told me that yes, this game was indeed epic. And how so? Well, Tyler Lockett's touchdown here in this end zone will be replayed for as long as Mount Rainier is tall around here. That that play with the two to, the double toe tap, toe drag inside the sideline when it looked like Russell Wilson was throwing the ball away. The best toe tap he's ever had, Lockett said. After the game, Pete Carroll said everybody in the locker room saying it's the best catch they've ever seen. And they will replay that forever here. That gave the Seahawks the lead after they were down 6-0 because they were just mistaking themselves right out of the game again. They were very fortunate to only be down two field goals rather than more in the first quarter. What else happened? Interesting, Tyler Lockett on the touchdown. His pet play from running from right to left on a diagonal all across the field. The Seahawks run it 50 times, if not more, in a season. Marcus Peters jumped that route on the first touchdown only because Wilson scrambled out, kept the play going, and Lockett ran to the other sideline. Did it become a touchdown with that ridiculous catch? Second quarter, 7-6 game, Brian Schottenheimer shows some of the criticism he gets for play calling is a little shallow and he should look a little deeper because he took that same route that the Seahawks use all the time with Lockett, a roll right by Russell Wilson, a throw back across the field to the left on a long diagonal to Lockett. Lockett started that route, Peters jumped it again. This time, though, Lockett cut off his route and went to the right sideline rather than going to the left. He went the opposite way. The Rams hadn't seen that before on that type of play. DK Metcalf, the rookie wide receiver for the Seahawks, ran behind where Metcalf or where Lockett usually would be running that route right to left in the wide void in the middle of the field. There was no Ram from here to the DC border. And Metcalf caught the pass. Pure perfection is what Russell Wilson called it, but credit Brian Schottenheimer for changing a Seahawks tendency and burning the Rams with their aggressiveness on it. I asked Lockett after the game, is that indeed what it was? A variation of his pet route that got Metcalf the touchdown and made it 14-6. And Lockett looked at me and said, I'm not gonna tell you everything, but your instincts are, you can go with your instincts, they're correct. 
I said it coming in, Road coming in, Todd Gurley was huge, a huge factor tonight. Would we see the Gurley that we saw in 2017 and 18, the guy who had 144 yards and three touchdowns in the first half of a Rams blowout win here in two seasons ago that kept the Seahawks out of the playoffs for the only time in seven years? Or would we get the Gurley that was in September, wasn't used much at all, and it seemed like Sean McVay, the Rams coach, was preserving him and his arthritic knee. Well, in the first quarter, we got the old Gurley and the destructive Gurley to the Seahawks. 31 yards in the first half. It looked like Gurley was on a rampage, but he ends up only with 51 yards the rest of the game. KJ Wright explained that they, after the game, he was explaining that these Rams played much more 12 personnel. One running back, two tight ends. They had played a lot more 10 personnel. One running back, no tight ends. And one running back, one tight end in their previous game. So they went 12 personnel and the Seahawks had to get used to the two tight ends and change their schemes and attacks. The Seahawks were trying everything new tonight once the Rams were showing so much two tight ends. They had Ziggy Ansah dropping into pass coverage near the goal line on a Cooper Cup touchdown pass. They're gonna drop him into coverage, watch just play nickel anyway. They played a lot more nickel tonight than they had recently. They even had Jadavion Clowney dropping into pass coverage, which they rarely do for their defensive ends. It works. 51 yards rushing for Gurley, and once Gurley didn't run, Jared Goff was having trouble, as he has so far this season, creating plays in the passing game. Quentin Jefferson with a couple hits. The Seahawks throttled the Rams' way of beating them in recent years, which is starting with Gurley and then playing the pass off of that. Brandon Jackson had an amazing play, I thought, in the middle of the field on a bubble screen out to Robert Woods. It prevented a touchdown. There were no great kazoo green jerseys in front of Woods, but Brandon Jackson, the defensive end, playing a defensive tackle, ran from the middle of the formation out to Woods on a second down play near the goal line, tackled Woods, prevented a touchdown. The Rams ended up kicking a field goal on that drive, and it was 29-24 rather than would have been, what, 33-24 with about seven minutes left because of that play by Brandon Jackson. So much more to talk about. It's online at thenewstribune.com, on Twitter at GBellSeattle. Thank you, and I'm sure you're privileged to have watched that as well. Thanks for watching. As always, have a great weekend.